Good morning, I'm Maddie Jansen, and this is the podcast of 17 News at Sunrise. It's everything you need to know to start your day in about 15 minutes. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. Good morning. A devastating scene in Erie, Pennsylvania over the weekend. Flames sweep through a daycare facility. We'll have the latest on the heartbreaking tragedy. Meantime, things are looking up at the pump if you're gearing up for a Labor Day road trip. We'll check local gas prices coming up. And this is the big week and the last big push to make sure teachers has, have everything they need to make it a successful school year. We'll have a check of our teacher wish list on this Monday, August 12, 2019. Maddie Jansen alongside Alex Fisher after a gorgeous weekend. Oh my goodness. I know, right? It was absolutely gorgeous. Saturday morning uh, was beautiful out there. I actually had to have a light jacket on uh, before the sunrise because it, we were just not used to it. It seemed like a preview of fall. It did. It, it really did exciting. feel like fall was out there, you know, yeah. and talking about back to school, hard to believe that kids go back to the classroom on Wednesday. A lot of teachers, of course, are already gearing up for uh, that first day of school. I mean, it is time. I think this was just a teaser, though, as far as we go in the weather That's department. Exactly right, Let's yeah. check in with Kevin on this monitor to see what's still ahead. Can we please keep these temperatures around? Uh, no. Uh, it, was de- <laughs> it was definitely a great weekend. Yesterday it wasn't bad. Look at this. 90 degrees was our high for Sunday. We were far from the record of 111, and that was set back in 1940. So definitely Sunday was nice. We we're going to start to warm up again this week. We're at 72 degrees on the temperature to start, so that's not bad. No winds to talk about right now. Take a look at the dog walk forecast for today. And Winston is our pop on this Monday morning. We're going to start out at 72 degrees, 79 by 10 a.m., and then you can see mid-90s as we progress into the afternoon and evening hours. And again, if you'd like your dog featured with us, you can send it to Kevin Charette at KGT.com. Our dog walk forecast, 55 degrees in Tehachapi right now, a northwest wind at 3 miles per hour. It was a great weekend up that way. And here's a look at the hour-by-hour temperatures. We'll be right near 77 by 11 and then back into the 80s as we progress into the 3 o'clock hour. So the 80s are going to be uh, in the forecast this afternoon. All areas continue to warm up throughout the week. We'll talk more about that coming up in a few minutes, Alex. All right, Kev, it was great while it lasted. All right, let's take a look at your morning commute and show you the 99 near White Lane, and it's looking pretty clear on that side of town. There is one crash on the southbound lanes of I-5 near Lebec Road, so be mindful of that. This is going to be ex- well, right at the summit, so be mindful of that if you're headed that way. It looks like uh, there could be. It looks like the slow lane is blocked at this time, and that there's glass in the roadway. So CHP is trying to clear that scene. Uh, but again, this is non. This is a non-injury accident, which is the good news. So hopefully, uh, things can clear up here uh, within the next uh, few minutes or so. Uh, other than that, things are looking pretty good around the county. We'll have another check coming up in about 15 minutes. Tragedy in Pennsylvania. Five children are dead after flames swept through a home in Erie Sunday morning. As the investigation continues to unfold, records indicate the house was registered as a daycare facility. NBC's Dan Sheneman has the latest on what investigators are learning. It was early Sunday morning in Erie, Pennsylvania, when the house was overwhelmed by flames. This here fire, five people and trapped. Neighbors a block away said they could hear screams. I tried to go inside. I made it to the open living room and just I couldn't go any farther. I just hope the kids made it. Inside, firefighters found four children dead. A fifth was taken to a hospital and succumbed to injuries. Their ages range from eight months to seven years old. The father of three of those children, a firefighter in a nearby township. Unthinkable and like I said, it's really beyond comprehension. One adult was airlifted from the scene. Uh, these firefighters are tough, but uh, when something like this happens, uh, you know, it's a little bit different. According to records, the house was registered as a daycare center. It was inspected within the last year. I can only imagine I have three of my own. Investigators must now determine the cause of the fire, while Erie must now deal with heartbreak. Dan Sheneman, NBC News. Arson investigators are trying to figure out what sparked a deadly house fire in California City. Firefighters say the flames broke out just after 3 o'clock yesterday afternoon at a home on Manzanita Avenue. One person died in the fire. No word on what started it. Two more victims of the deadly Dayton, Ohio mass shooting will be laid to rest today. Nine people were killed and 27 others wounded when a gunman opened fire last Sunday in Dayton's Oregon district. Today, family and friends will say their final farewells to 27-year-old Lois O'Glesby and 25-year-old Thomas McNicholas. 
Now, Glesby was a nursing student and mother of two, and McNicholas was a father of four. They're the seventh and eighth victims to be laid to rest. Six other victims were buried on Saturday. There's no word on when the funeral for the ninth victim, the shooter's sister, will be held. Singer-songwriter John Legend toured the Oregon District with the city's mayor Sunday, one week after the deadly mass shooting there. Legend is an Ohio native. In the wake of the shooting, Dayton's mayor has asked people to come support businesses there in that district where the shooting happened. So that's what Legend did. He shopped, visited with local business owners, and met the son of a woman killed in the August 4th attack. Surrounded by reporters, residents, and members of Moms Demand Action, Legend called on legislators to ban semi-automatic weapons and require background checks on every gun sale. We don't have to live like this. There are meaningful actions that we can all take to stop gun violence in this country. We've heard politicians send their thoughts and prayers while failing to act. We are done with that. He also performed at a bar in the Oregon District. You're looking at video from that performance. Legend said he wanted to inspire the community and encourage people to keep coming back to the Oregon District. The recent mass shootings have people on edge and police departments nationwide on high alert. The same goes for here in Bakersfield. On Friday, police got a call saying there was a man inside the Valley Plaza Mall armed with a gun. Officers showed up in force and checked it out. After a thorough search, police concluded there was not an active shooter at the mall. Three hours later, moviegoers at Reading Cinemas next door to the Valley Plaza experienced a similar unsettling scare. People inside a theater told us they were seated inside when people in the back rows ran from their seats yelling about a shooter. Witnesses say some took cover while others ran out. Officers assigned, uh, assigned to the Valley Plaza area immediately responded. They said there was no indication anyone saw a gun and no shots were fired. No arrests were made. Search is on for a man police are calling a thief after a surveillance camera caught him stealing from a liquor store. Take a look at this picture. This man at Bakersfield Police say stole cigarettes and lottery tickets from Sony Food Store on Bernard Street Thursday. He's described as a white male in his 20s with a thin build, brown hair, and was last seen wearing a blue shirt, gray shorts, and a blue backpack. Police say he took off in a white single cab 90s Nissan pickup. A Caliente man found guilty of killing his friend during an argument will soon know how long he'll spend behind bars. In April, jurors found Daniel Rhodes guilty of second-degree murder. Rhodes shot William Alford last October and admitted to putting his body in a trash can. Court documents say Rhodes claimed Alford forced him his way into the home and demanded items of value and threatened him. Police still have not found, an Alf- have not found Alford's body. Rhodes faces 40 years to life for the murder. He's due in court for sentencing tomorrow morning. More construction is scheduled to begin around town today, and that means that several new long-term ramp closures are set to take effect. The northbound off-ramp to 24th Street and the on-ramp from Buck Owens Boulevard to the 99 will be closed for the next 55 days. This is so crews can construct an auxiliary lane on 24th Street. It's all part of the Bakersfield 99 rehab project. A detour will take drivers through Buck Owens Boulevard and Oak Streets instead. So make sure you're prepared for any possible delays in the area. Yeah, there's a lot of traffic. There's pro- a lot of road work a lot going of pro- on right uh, projects going on around the Think county. about that, you know, as you're maybe taking a different route back to school on Wednesday. Yeah, just in general, just be aware of some uh, projects around town. All right, still have this morning on Sunrise. His family is grieving, but they're giving back to the community he loved so much. We'll show you how the Arredondo family is helping young kids get ready to go back to school. Plus, still ahead, students at one Northern California school have only been back in the classroom for a week, but there's already controversy brewing. We'll explain how a piece of paper sparked it all. The family of the late philanthropist Jose Arredondo hosted a backpack drive over the weekend to celebrate Arredondo's legacy of giving. The family handed out backpacks filled with school supplies to help students eager to get back to the classroom. They got creative with the pickup, doing a drive through to make things a bit easier on parents. We're doing a drive through um, just giving backpacks to the, to the kids so they can go back to school. As you can see, the whole, that line was here since 1.30. And the final numbers are in for our KGET back to school drive. Thanks to your generosity, the drive this year was a success. We collected more than 500 backpacks for kids living at the homeless center. In addition to those kids who are also part of the center's after care program. 
The kids were able to pick out their favorite backpack over the weekend just in time for the first day of school. So thank you to everyone who helped out with that drive. All right, it is 519, and students aren't the only ones needing supplies as back-to-school season ramps up. Teachers do as well. And that's why we're helping teachers stuck at their classrooms, and you can help as well. So that would means Tabitha Mills joining us this morning to explain the teacher wish list and how to get involved. Yeah, we've been talking about it for about the past week on, uh, on 17 News mm -hmm. because there are a lot of teachers in our community who have to spend money out of their own pocket to prepare to educate our kids in the school year. A recent study found 94% of public school teachers spend their own money on supplies for their students, and on average, that's just under $500 a year. Many and our teachers in our community, they, they just can't afford that. So we want to help, and you can help too. We've posted the wish list of local teachers on our website, kget.com. Teachers like Tracy Battistoni at Beardsley Elementary. She has a wish list on Amazon and is asking for pins, hand sanitizer, and chair bands for kids with fidgety feet. If you'd like to help a teacher with a link like Tracy's, just click on the Amazon link underneath their picture. Then when checking out online, make sure to select the shipping address provided for that teacher. You can also find teachers like Myra Benavides at the Lamont School District. The link to her wish list will take you to another page on KGET.com where you can view the items she's asking for. Things like Ziploc bags, Expo markers, puzzles, Velcro, and pencil grips. If you'd like to help a teacher with a link like that, Myra's email, uh, or like email, uh, like Myra's that is, you can email them with the contact information provided and arrange a way to drop off the items that you'd like to purchase for them. You can find the wish list submitted by teachers on our website website kget.com click on the hot link icon section and most teachers are also willing to take gently used items you don't have to buy new uh, new items if you don't want to things like books chairs things of that sort and also you don't have to buy everything on a wish list you can buy one or two sure. items anything is greatly appreciated yeah, for sure so exciting to see people reaching out to help it really, really is cool. it really is and I mean, they can use it so yeah, maybe even if you can spare you know five bucks ten bucks uh, yeah. you know, that goes a long way to yeah a teacher. I mean a lot of the things they're asking for are under 10 bucks, you can buy some pins, some mm -hmm. expo markers, you know, one pack of markers will last teacher's school year. And you think, why? Mm -hmm. Why do they need, you know, something so small? But it adds up for them mm -hmm. when they're, you know, serving these 30 or so kids yeah. on a yearly basis. Yeah, especially you think about the high school teachers who have, you know, 30 times yeah. five right. classes exactly. a day. Exactly. So it does certainly add up. All right, All right. thanks, thanks Tabs. All right, well, you may have noticed you're paying less when you fill up at the gas pump. Coming up, your 17 Business Watch will tell you just how long you can expect to feel that relief at the pump. Summer is almost over, but Labor Day is right around the corner, and people hitting the road for that long weekend may continue to see a bit of relief at the pump. That's because gas prices are continuing to fall, even though demand from motorists remains strong. AAA says Americans will likely continue to see prices at the pump drop through the fall. Even more relief could be on the way with the switch to winter gasoline. The average price of regular gasoline is down about 20 cents compared to this time last year. AAA says the national average for regular gas is now 2.65 a gallon. In California, it's 3.63, and in Kern County, the average is 3.74. According to GasBuddy.com, the lowest price on gas in Bakersfield is 3.21, and you can find it at the On the Go Food Store on River Boulevard in Northeast Bakersfield. To look up gas prices in your neighborhood, head to KGET.com and click on the Traffic section. While people might not be spending as much money on gas, here's one thing people are still spending thousands on, weddings. Chris Clackham explains how to avoid going into debt just to tie the knot. With the average cost of a wedding right at $34,000, it's no wonder some couples go in debt just to make their special day really special. But to many, wedding day debt is a nuptial no-no. Borrowing money to throw a party and that's basically what a wedding is, is the party, uh, is starting your life off in a financial hole. Even folks in the business of matrimony have doubts about borrowing for the one day where marital bliss begins. You're spending money you don't have, which can be damaging to your credit long term and later in your marriage. Lauren Kay is executive editor at TheKnot.com and admits it's hard to not want your wedding day to be the most memorable for everybody. But... There's no stigma against having a small, intimate wedding or really prioritizing what you want to spend on. Or choosing a wedding day outside peak seasons. Anything to avoid running up debt or running to the bank for a wedding loan. It's one thing to borrow money for a car or a house, but pay, borrowing to pay for a wedding, 
Uh, it's just a sign that you're overextending yourself. Bank rates Greg McBride says loans like this can hurt what you hope is a long-lasting marriage. Chris Clackham, NBC News.